This is a piece of hackberry that viewer Tim from California sent me. That was very kind of him to do and much appreciated. It's about 12 and a half inches long and it's kind of oval shaped so it's about 6 by 7 depending on where you measure it. I'm going to cut it in half and I'm going to turn this half. I think I know what I'm going to try to make out of this but as always that's subject to change as you start turning. So let's get this cut in half get it mounted up and we'll start making a somewhat simple turning. Okay, I've got it cut down to size. It's on a worm screw. Got the uh, live center up against it. I just sharpened up my 5 8 and half inch bowl gouge. I'm going to go ahead and start with the 5 8 I get my face shield and I think we're going to be doing about 650 RPM. Okay, so I'm going to get this bottom flattened out, get a tenon on it, and I may flip it around to work on the top because the shape I'm after, it's going to be hard to do from this direction. I just shortened this thing right here a little bit. It was going to be in my way if I didn't cut it off. So now I'm going to mark a, approximately where the tenon is, cut some more of this off, and then reshape that area. and see if I can round this over now. Switch back to the 5 8 The bark is really on there tight so I'm not too worried about peeling it off. Alright, that's about, I think that's about as far as I want to go with my shape that I'm thinking about doing and I'll stop right there. I've got it flipped around and it's mounted on the tenon. It's running pretty true. I just want to clean this up a little bit and I think I'm going to go with the shape I have. Half inch bowl gouge and we'll see if we can get this cleaned up.
Okay, I'll go ahead and show you some of the sanding here. It looks like it should be really easy, but when you come around here, I'm missing wood from here to the top. So that doesn't sand real smooth under power like this. Probably have to stop, sand some by hand, as well as even taking a sheet just to try to blend anything in. So I'll be sanding in reverse at about 350 RPM, starting with 80 grit, and we'll sand up through 400. So I'll get my dust collector going and we'll do a little sanding. I have the outside all sanded up and thinking about how hard this wood is I'm going to go ahead and drill it out and I think that's not even going to be easy I'm going to start with this maybe it's an inch and a quarter bit I didn't even measure it and then I'll work my way up to probably about a two and an eighth inch or so I'm not going to make you watch all of that because I do think it's going to be slow Knowing how hard this wood is, and I want to keep a smaller opening to begin with, I think I'll use my hollowing tools. I think I have the camera set up right now the best to where I'm not blocking it. You can't see inside that hole anyways, so I'll show you some of this. I'll change the camera view so maybe you can get a different angle on it. But the fact that you can't see what's going on in there, it's probably not real exciting. So I'll be turning around 650 RPM, see how that works. That's a mid-sized carbide that I'm going to use. Well, I don't have a lot done yet, but I've got to start. But I just switched the lathe into reverse. And I'll be standing on this side, and it should be quite a bit easier. So, you've got to make sure you have a screw on the collar of your chuck back there, and you have it tightened up. Otherwise, turning this way can unscrew everything. About the same speed, around 650. So I got it all hollowed out to about a half inch wall and it's pretty consistent except here of course this is real thin because there wasn't any wood here but it's still plenty strong I can still see wood under it so now it's time for some finish and I decided to use shellac on this so we'll start with some shellac based sanding sealer get a couple coats and then we'll get the shellac on and we'll just wipe this on That's what I'm anxious to see is what that bark looks like.
that part of the bark is really interesting looking. It's wow. Looks like stone. It's very, very dense bark. I didn't have any trouble cutting either direction with it. That's about it. I'll get a uh, a brush and finish getting this on. I've got all the finish on this and it actually turned out quite well. I found one area that had a little streak in it and I'll show you a way to get rid of that and it really works quite well to get you an extra smooth finish. This is the Axe uh, Polishing Restoring Paste. I'll get that on it and while you're at it, you might as well do the whole uh, project. But this is 2000 grit wet and dry paper. So now I'm just wet sanding it using a wax. And I'll just go all over it. And I'm not going to do the whole thing because I actually have already done it. But this is what we're doing. And then I'll take a paper towel and, and just get rid of that case there's any grit on it. And I'll get wax over the, the whole thing again. And I like to use cloth. I'm not going to go out here where it'll catch. I've got it going about 800 RPM. And then I'll just buff it out and you'll see that it's like a piece of glass now. So that's just another little thing you can do if you're not totally satisfied with your finish and you just want to go one step farther, that's pretty easy to do. Okay, it's time to remove the tenon. And I have this little branch here that I use on deeper turnings to support it while I do that. I'll put a piece of this padded material on it. And let's see how it runs. Actually, it looks pretty good. So, we'll start out with a half inch bowl gouge and cut most of it away. And then about 700 RPM to start with. So I like to use my little spindle gouge for getting this nub down small and maybe even cutting it all the way off. Okay, it worked. If you want to see it done right, check out Phil. He is the expert of this. I think he came up with the whole idea. I don't do it that often, but this was on a big long support, so I wasn't too worried about it. Well, here's the little hackberry pot. And I think it looks pretty good. But my favorite part is this bark. This looks like rusted cast iron and it feels like it. it's just very dense and I really love the color underneath that bark when I turned and sanded through it. It's very rich color. It's about five inches tall and five and a half diameter at the widest and the base is about three and a half inches. The walls are pretty close to a half everywhere except where the wood was missing here so it comes up to about an eighth inch. I use Zinser Seal Coat and then I use Zinser Shellac for the finish. Went over it with Scotch Bright and both the gray and the white. Still had a couple spots I couldn't get out, so I used the 
axe polishing paste and 2000 grit and went over the whole thing. It's about as smooth as you could ever get it. Pretty happy with it. In the beginning I had this idea. I thought, well this might make a nice little pot for potpourri because I still had a, a lid left. It was just too big. I would have had to cut too much bark off. So I wasn't willing to do that. So I was just going to leave it as is. I decided I'll make this little lid. I'll take it inside and see if that's something that would look good. I was told it probably looks better without it. It's kind of growing on me now. Looks kind of interesting. Let me know what you think about that lid because I can either put it on or leave it off. But I'm pretty happy with it and uh, a special thanks to Tim for sending me this piece of hackberry. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for watching. It is most appreciated. If you liked the video, you can let me know by clicking the like button. If you click that share button, that would also be great. Special thanks to all you subscribers. You are the best. If you're not subscribed, consider doing so. I do all types of turnings. And I love reading all your comments as well. So, till the next time, see you later.